Well, good evening. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. And no, Pastor didn't put a white shirt and a tie on. It's casual. It's Friday. I'm tired. I'm wore out. And I'm looking forward to get out of the office tonight and go home. But God has truly been good as people come out, kick on tonight. Hi, Dave. It's good to see you. I hope you've had a good day here in Southeast Michigan. And I pray that God continue to bless you and your family. And I am praying for your daughter and the entire family that God would just continue to work miracles. Hi, Beulah. It's good to see you. Hi, Lisa Harding. As people kick on the night. I know it's Friday. Everybody's got something to do. Hi, Charlie. I hope you've had a good day. I know you've been a busy week. Hi, Mama Man. I understand you're doing better. The report came back. Everything was normal. And I thank God for that. Hi, Sandy. It's good to see you. We pray that God continue to bless you as you continue to battle all these problems the devil throws at us. But understand, God is in control. Hi, Tom Stu. Good to see you. As people kick on tonight, Pastor, we've got a prayer request. Remember my dad and mom in prayer tonight. Dad's had a very rough week uh, with breathing problems and different things going on in his life. And my brother is there staying with him right now, Gary, and uh, spoke with mom this afternoon. And dad was having some difficulty breathing. So continue to pray for dad. He's uh, having some problems. Remember Glenda O'Connor in prayer that God would continue to be with her and bless her. Remember my brother-in-law, Paul Tyler. God knows exactly what Paul needs, but I know that God is able to touch him and bless him and ask that you touch, uh, ask God for a special touch. Remember Jack and Glenda Ruffner in prayer and their entire family. Remember Mama Maynard in prayer, Faye Johns and Irene Russ Holbrook, Connie Wiley. Remember Bob Cotton and family. We've got Bob home on hospice. Haven't got able to speak with anybody this week, but I did speak with Charles last night, and Charles said he's on hospice, and it's just a matter of time. So pray for the family. Remember Liz Buckner. She is home. Continue to pray for her. Remember Gary Johnson, brother Lucius Johnson, passed away yesterday. Continue to pray for the family. Flo Stiltner's daughter had surgery this morning. Uh, maybe I see Flo on. Uh, Kim didn't give me an update, and I ask that you continue to pray for Flo and the entire family. Remember our church. Remember our nation in prayer. Pray for the, the things that God knows to be true, to come out, and God would bless America. Folks, whether you realize it or not today, we are in trouble. America is in trouble. Pastor, you've been saying that for a while. Any time that you take and sacrifice children to a false god, and that's what they're doing in our country today. Uh, the uh, adoption, uh, not the adoption, but the kidnapping and child pornography and the abduction in this country is at an all-time high. Michigan is either number one or number two in child abduction in America. It's amazing. And we live in a country that would adopt, uh, uh, take children and use them for human sacrifice. That is crazy. And these are the reports that pastors getting. And I believe they'll be true because uh, of the people that send me the information. Tonight we're going to look in 1 Peter chapter 5 in verses 10 and 11. And I title this, Looking Beyond to Glory. Folks, there's trouble in this world, but there's glory in the world to come. Notice what God's word said here in Peter pins them and said, But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, and after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Father, we love you today. We thank you for the many blessings of life that you bestowed upon us. Lord, I pray tonight for our country. I pray for our nation today. I pray, God, for the sickness that is in our churches, uh, that is in our land. Uh, I pray today, God, that you would send revival among your people today. Lord, if there was ever a time that we need you, 
Father, we need you today. Father, will you intervene in a mighty way as only you can. Lord, will you reach down and touch your people today. Lord, you know the needs of our people today. And Father, we'll never fail to bow down and give you praise, glory, and honor. For Lord, all these things we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus. And amen. Think about this. There is suffering now, but after a while, there'll be no suffering. Jesus said, if you suffer with me, you'll reign with me. Folks, let me say something today. There's a right way to suffer and a wrong way to suffer. If you suffer because you're out of the will of God, then there is no hope. And a lot of people today think they're doing God's will when in reality, they don't even know God or know who God is. They have a form of religion and they go about establishing their own set of rules and uh, principles, uh, and they're not living uh, according to the Word of God. Uh, they're too busy doing everything else. I noticed tonight when I kicked on, uh, they were 351 of my friends uh, that was online uh, uh, doing something. Uh, but do you think that 351, they all got a notification uh, that pastor was live. How many do you think uh, will hit the icon uh, and tune in uh, and listen to the Word of God. No, uh, they got other things to do uh, than to tune in uh, and hear the Word of God. Folks, we've come to the day in America God is not important uh, in our life, but we can complain uh, and suffer of our own uh, stupidity because we're not in the center of God's will. But if we suffer for the cause of Christ, then we'll have glory when this life is over. But if you suffer because you work for the devil all week and not work for God, then how can you come to the house of God and expect God to bless you? He cannot. Who can deny it? We all suffer. We see suffering in the world of all kinds. But a lot of it is man-made. It's because we're not in the center of God's will. Listen, God's grace is sufficient. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. And let's look at what Paul said about God's uh, grace in 12 uh, and 9. And here's what Paul says in 12 and 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in thy weakness. In other words, Paul had an infirmity, and God said, My grace is sufficient. God will never put no more upon you or upon me uh, than we're able to bear. But a lot of times uh, we get out of the will of God uh, and God will let us suffer until we come to the point, God, I'm sorry, and ask for forgiveness and get back uh, in the center of God's will. Now, Paul hadn't sinned. Uh, don't misunderstand, uh, Pastor, tonight. Paul had been called uh, up into the third heaven uh, and Satan uh, uh, was was buffeting him. Uh, there was a thorn uh, in Paul's side. Uh, and God said, uh, I put that there so that you will not be exalted uh, above measure. Other words, God put the thorn uh, in the flesh uh, to keep Paul humble. Sometimes we suffer as Christians uh, to make us better and to get us closer unto God. Uh, personally speaking, and God Hear me tonight. I don't want no more afflictions. I don't want no more sickness. I don't want no more troubles and trials. I've had enough for a lifetime. But sometimes God would bring things on my life to get me to look up and say, God, I'm sorry I'm here. Now, listen, those things happen. But when you get out of the will of God, you can get in trouble. There will be glory later. Later. We don't want glory here. If you have glory here, you ain't going to receive nothing. I would rather have the glory on the other side over there. Listen, he promised us heaven. He promised you and I heaven in the word of God. 
Jesus said, I go to prepare a place in John 14. If Jesus prepared a place for it, then we're going to share in the glory of God. Listen, I don't want a mansion here. I want a mansion over there. I don't want jewels here. I want jewels in my crown over there. Why do you want a crown? That I can lay it at the feet of Jesus, that I've lived right, that I've done right, that I've been obedient unto the word of God. That's what Brother Slater's striving for, is to be obedient unto the will of God. Listen, he'll present us unto Christ, the Lord will, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. And look at what the word of God said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, what it says. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are comforted, I say, willing rather to be abused, be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I'd rather suffer a little bit in this life than to suffer and die and go to hell. But folks, listen, glory is beyond our imagination. It is beyond anything that you and I can fathom. In our suffering, God is preparing us for glory. Think about what I just said. In our suffering, God is preparing us for glory. In verse 10, but the, but, but the God of all glory, who has called us unto his eternal glory. Think about that. God is preparing for us glory through suffering. Now, Brother Slater, you lost your mind. Listen, he said, if you suffer with me, you shall reign with me. If you endure unto the end. Listen, he has established you and built you up by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith knowing that there is a place eternal in the heavens prepared for you and I. There's a place, whoo, glory to God, that he's prepared for you and I. Make no mistake, as Charlie said there, it is in, impossible to understand. He has strengthened us. He has established us. He has strengthened us. He has placed us on a firm foundation. He took me out of the miry clay, put my feet upon the solid rock, and established my going. And he said, Son, if you suffer just for a little while, and when the cares of this life is over, I'll take you on to glory. Think about the suffering that our Lord and Savior did for you and I. He suffered beyond the... Uh, we can't even comprehend the suffering that Christ did for you and I. I can't fathom tonight what he went through. I can't imagine the pain and the hurt and the anguish and everything that he went through tonight that you and I could have life and have it more abundant. I want you to understand uh, God is able to keep that which you and I have committed unto him until that day. Justin, I'm on the, on the radio. Bye. Justin keeps calling. He forget Dad's on the thing tonight. Wow. He has placed us on a solid foundation. Kim, call your son and make sure he's all right. He called twice in a row. We shall then shake as if it's the glory of God. We'll, we love the Lord tonight, and I pray that Justin's fine. Suffering is to make us to be Christ-like. If we suffer, it is to be Christ-like. Listen to what Paul said in Romans chapter 8 and verses 28 and 29. And we know that all things work together to the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For who he did foreknow, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. I am glad tonight that I am born again, that my name is written down in the land book of life. And one day after a while, I'm going to lay down the cares of this old world, and I'm going to go home to be with the Lord. The fourth and final thing, the suffering now cannot compare 
to the glory beyond life after death. Oh my God, you cannot even fathom tonight what it'll be like your first day in heaven. You can't imagine uh, what it'll be like to see Jesus and see the saints of God. Think about mom and, and, and dad and all of those that went on to be with the Lord. Think about the goodness of God and the mercy of God. Where there's a place where there's no more death, there's no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more pain, no more crying, no more division, no more hurting, no more troubles and trials and wars. A place where eternity with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this in this life is nothing compared to the glory beyond life. Oh, my God. We are called to his eternal glory. Paul said to his eternal glory in Romans 5 and 15 says this, For you have been reconciled, for you have received the spirit, not a bondage against fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Praise be to God. I can cry unto the Heavenly Father. He is my Redeemer. I am glad tonight to know that I serve one that died for me. Think about beyond this life, looking beyond to glory. I call it, Mike Perky sings a song, some call it heaven but I call it home. Uh, I don't know about you one day. There's a place that God has prepared for you and I tonight on the other side. I am glad to know that he is mine and I am his. I love him tonight and I thank him for his goodness and mercy and almighty grace. Pastor's going to say good night and I love you. Don't forget tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, Brother Charlie will be back on and, um, uh, at 10 and then Sunday morning at 9 o'clock on Brother Charlie's page. We're studying in the book of Revelation. Brother Charlie and Sister Rhonda will be teaching. Tune in there. And then at 11 o'clock, we um, will be live here at the church. If you want to come and, and worship with us, follow the CDC guidelines, wear your mask, come in, and we'll have a great time. Pastor going to say, God bless you. And good night. Pray for my son. I don't know exactly what's going on. Kim didn't come back on and give me an update. But he's very seldom. He would call a couple times in a row like that. But I pray that everything went well with him. Brother Slater is going to say God bless you. And good night.